What's going on YouTube? Um, set championships are almost up and uh, we've only got one more weekend. And so I wanted to do a little bit of um, kind of looking back at the last month and specifically at how I did. Um, and I didn't do very well. So um, I thought it would be useful to kind of look back and look back at some of the decks I played and, and um, I don't know, just think about what I could have done better. Um, I think, you know, we often uh, in the field that I come from, uh, where I work, we do a lot of retrospectives. And I think retrospectives are really, really useful because they help us take a moment to kind of stop and look at what we've done and think about how we can improve. Um, if you don't do that, you just kind of keep going forward and you think you're too stopped or you're too busy to stop, um, but you're just making your life harder and, and it may take you a lot longer to get better at something. Um, I'm kind of in a phase where, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to get better at Lorcana. I want to be competitive. And so um, I think it's really useful to stop and think and like spend a little time looking back and thinking about the games that we played uh, and how we might be able to, to do better next time. I'm going to talk a little bit about how I prepared for set champs. So um, with Pixelborn going down, um, I'm in a small testing group. Um, probably the weakest player in the group. Um, every other member of the group has won a Stitch or an Ursula. Um, I think all of them have actually won both. Um, one of them, uh, you know, comes from, I think, Yu-Gi-Oh! One of them comes from uh, Magic. So they've been playing card games a long time, um, and I really haven't. Um, we try to meet up regularly. Uh, we test meta decks, but we also try to, you know, test tweaks to improve our matchups or how might we change the meta deck or, or even just, you know, testing decks that we've built from scratch. Um, I like to deck build. Uh, I don't know if I'm the best at it, but uh, I do like to, to deck build. And so um, we will test stuff in um, uh, in our sessions. Um, here's the makeup of my testing group. So um, the first player is a, an RP player for the most part. Um, he's found the most success with RP. Um, he played a lot of blue steel at the beginning of this set. Um, but he has returned to RP, um, you know, for the set championships and he's been very successful. Um, second player, uh, B, um, is a deck builder primarily. Um, that's kind of how we first became friends. Um, he rarely plays a off the shelf meta deck, um, and he prefers to play more aggressive play styles, um, and, and stuff that he brews himself, uh, mostly. Um, or, you know, he riffs on a meta deck and then kind of changes some stuff and, and tries to make it work. Third player, um, is a green steel specialist, uh, pretty much. He's played green steel exclusively in set three and set four. So he's playing Bucky this set. Um, and, uh, you know, it was really helpful to have somebody who was playing Bucky a lot because I got to get a lot of practice against that matchup. Um, I feel pretty comfortable in that matchup more so than I feel against some other matchups. Um, for example, the blue steel mirror, um, you know, I didn't get as much testing time against the blue steel mirror since nobody in, in my test group, uh, plays blue steel. Um, finally me, um, I'm indecisive. Uh, I play a lot of different decks. I build a lot of different decks um, I, at my core though, I want to play something that's competitive. If it's not competitive, I'm not going to have fun playing it. Um, you know, I, I want to excel. I want to succeed. Um, so I, I like to play something that is competitive, but I don't like to just take something, um, off the shelf. I like to put my spin on it uh, a little bit or, or, or try to introduce something new to it. Um, I have ADHD. Um, that makes it challenging sometimes to play the game. Um, and uh, I like to change. I like to change my decks. I like to um, t 
to change what I'm playing. If I play something for too long uh, or too often, I'll get uh, bored. Now, that means um, I don't really feel like I'm a specialist at, at any deck. Um, I spent most of this set playing Blue Steel. Um, I, uh, other than I went to Chicago, I played RP um, there. Uh, for the most part, I have played Red Blue or Blue Steel um, this set. I played red blue for the most part of the set, and then I played uh, blue steel pretty much since uh, Chicago. Um, I got pretty frustrated in Chicago. I played uh, RP. I drew Bucky five times. Uh, I did not have a fun day, um, and that kind of was before we understood the game plan against RP or for RP against um, uh, green steel. So I just really struggled. Um, I've spent a lot of time on Blue Steel, uh, but the week before my first Ursula set champs, uh, I met up with my testing group and I played five hours of Blue Steel into RP, and I won zero games, um, and that worried me a lot. Uh, I think you know, kind of since then we've started to introduce Argus, and he, even then, like we were starting to introduce Argus, I was playing around with Lawrence. I, I introduced Lawrence into my my deck that weekend. Um, I was playing one jump ahead in Lawrence um, and playing no wheel um, and couldn't win a single game um, and felt really defeated going into set champs. Um, I kind of had felt the meta start to shift to RP, um, RP and green steel and kind of off of Sisu. So uh, I got a bit scared and um You'll see what happened uh, in a minute. Uh, my first set champs was at Games of Berkeley. Uh, I'm the TO for that store. Um, so I play there uh, every week. Um, there were 32 people at the set champs. Uh, the local meta is a lot of green steel, uh, a lot of red blue items, and a lot of blue steel items. Uh, I had started to feel the shift to RP and I was right. There were multiple players who had been playing either blue steel items or red blue items that went back to RP for set champs, even though they had been playing red blue or blue steel at league. Um, I decided I was just gonna throw out all the prep I did and play something spicy. Um, I don't think this was a great idea. Um, I wouldn't recommend it uh, for your set champs, um, but I had a lot of fun um, playing the deck and I was super stressed out. I really wanted to win. I really wanted to, to make top eight um, and playing something completely off the wall at least got me out of my head a little bit. Um, so I did have fun. I had a lot of fun playing this deck. Um, it's pretty low to the ground. It goes fast. Um, you've got a lot of kind of uh, interesting curves early in the game. Um, you know, you play Hidden Cove. Uh, the, the kind of strongest openings are play Hidden Cove, uh, or play Zazu on one, play Hidden Cove on two, move Zazu to Hidden Cove and quest uh, on turn two. And then uh, like turn three, play Flynn plus Merfolk. Um, some combination of that or, you know, kind of start um, going up. The other kind of line that's that's quite good with this deck is Merfolk on one, Flynn on two, uh, Prince John on three, and then ideally like Hypnotize on four to kind of refresh your hand a little bit or just dive into McDuck Manor on four. Um, my plan was get to four, play McDuck Manor. Uh, Flint Heart was here for a little bit of Diablo tech. It uh, deals with evasive. It would remove um, Diablo at Cove. Um, so it came in handy a couple times uh, for that. Um, just, uh, you know, a bunch of kind of utility actions. I, I really like Bounce. I think that card is really underrated. Um, it allows me to like bounce back a Merfolk or a Flynn and reset it. And uh, as well as uh, tempo them, as well as like bounce something bigger of theirs back. Um, dodge uh, came in handy a couple times just to give a merfolk 
uh, ward and evasive on like turn 18 uh, so I could get over the line and win a game. Um, hypnotize just synergy with Prince John uh, and some of the other discard on challenge. Um, for locations, uh, we ran Hidden Cove, uh, Montanui, and McDuck. McDuck is just a big body that gets you two lore. Um, you're almost always going to get two lore off of it um, unless you know, you're know you playing it onto a board with uh, Maui plus other things. Um, Montanui, um, I found to be really useful um, if I didn't get Hidden Cove, um, but I had a Zazu. Um, where I could play like Montanui on two and um, move Zazu and quest. And then, you know, if they challenge Zazu, I get to ramp off of it. Um, and I found that um, really, really helpful. Basically, you know, we don't have a ton of card draw. And so you want to stop kind of inking uh, around three. Um, overall, this deck performed pretty well. Um, I was kind of shocked, actually. Um, I ended in 11th place, uh, or sorry, 12th place, um, and lost on, uh, you know, largely, uh, a single game. I played the person who ended up taking down the tournament, um, in round three, I was 2-0, um, going into that round, um, and I dropped that round 2-0. One of those games, uh, I lost by one lore. And um, if I had won that game, I would have been up at uh, 23 and I would have made um, top cut likely based on um, tiebreakers, uh, probably. Um, I think it's, it still would have been close potentially, but um, I think there's a good chance, you know, that that I uh, get into one of those two spots that went to, to seven points. Um, ultimately... Uh, fell short. I went home that night and uh, I had one more set champ the next day and I was like, well, let me tweak this deck a little bit. Let me play with it a little bit. Um, you know, a couple people in my play test group were like, I don't know why you're running Hypnotize. You know, you shouldn't run that. Like if you're already running, you know, Judy, like why don't you think about just running some popsicles that you could pop? Uh, or used to heal. So I did that. I, I changed the deck up a little bit. Um, I also introduced the kit cloud kicker, but I think I just like changed too much. Um, and uh, this deck did not do as well the next day. Um, I think uh, the other deck is just stronger. Um, it's got the Prince John for better card draw. Um, this has a lot less card draw. I found myself needing cards a whole lot more. Um, I switched Montanui to DeVille, and I found myself wanting more ink um, when Montanui would have really helped me with that in, in certain situations. Um, this one, uh, you know, it ended up not really working at all. Um, I lost my first match. I drew my wife in the second match. Um, she had gone one, one, um, I had gone Oh two in my first match. So she paired down into me. So I just conceded to her, which put me in an Oh two hole. Um, and then, you know, I was just kind of tilted, uh, I think a bit and, um, didn't play well. Uh, drew into an RP match where I couldn't deal with the castle that came down on four and then another castle that came down on five. Um, I ended up beating a uh, Emerald Amethyst deck um, going one and one uh, somewhere else. My, my last match was against Bucky and I just conceded. I didn't feel like playing. I, I wasn't going to make top cut. So I didn't feel like playing against a, a Bucky deck. So that was the end of the first weekend. Um, you know, I feel like I probably shot myself in the foot. I sabotaged myself by playing um, deck ideas that I hadn't really tested. Um, so um, I don't know. I do that. I get in my head. I listen to people around me. I get swayed. I... Um, talk myself out of playing something that I was really prepared for. Um, 
second weekend of set champs, I was traveling. Uh, I was up at a friend's house in Washington. I did find a place to play that weekend. Um, I played at Gabby's Olympic Cards and Comics in Lacey, Washington. Um, it was a pretty small set championship. I think there was only like 12, 13 people that showed up. Um, I decided, you know what, let me just play something consistent. Um, I had read uh, Knowing Knots Guide on RP um, and gotten a few reps in with RP. I'm familiar with the deck um, for the most part. I, I, I think the nuances of the deck I, I don't get as much as some people. Uh, and that would come back to bite me, um, in round four, um, because I think the mirror match is, you know, a lot of people talk about the mirror match and RP being very high skill. Um, and I just don't feel like I understand the mirror match as well as I, I should probably, especially with RP as prevalent as it is. Um, I did start off going 2-0 though. Um, and so things were looking really good. Um, I ended up drawing a friend in round three. Um, she ended up taking third, uh, in the event. Um, and she was playing just in time gym. Um, and the location, um, pressure was just a little bit too much for my deck to handle with, um, RLS legacy, uh, Tiana's palace um, you know, and, and underworld, um, as well as just big bodies that quest for two. So, um, you know, I can't brawl them. I can't Medusa some of the, the bodies in that list. So, um, just was kind of a tough matchup and, uh, dropped that one. And then uh, I was still in a good position. I was in uh, third actually at that point. And, um, I, uh, drew, um, the guy that was playing, uh, RP. So it was RP mirror and I got O2. Um, if I had won that, I would have been in the top four. I would have gotten a promo. Um, but as it was, I ended up in sixth, um, good tiebreakers. Um, obviously since I lost to the first or the second and third place people. Um, so, you know, my tiebreakers were the best out of anybody who was two, two. Um, which is, is what put me where I was, um, kind of a bummer. Um, you know, if I had snagged, you know, one of those, I, I would have made a uh, top cut and, and gotten a promo. Um, came home, um, and had two set champs planned for last weekend. Um, I played at forgotten path games on Saturday and, I decided I should just go back to what I had put all my reps in um, and, you know, kind of looked at what some of the decks were doing, um, you know, over the course of set champs. And I decided I wanted to go a little bit heavier with Ariel and Chen Po um, just for the RP matchup, uh, which I think did well in the RP game that I did play. We ended up going to time uh, and drew, but I feel like um, I had a pretty good shot at that game. I, I was way ahead in lore. Um, uh, actually, I had neutralized um, Flynn and, and Sisu and kind of really gotten ahead. Um, I played a little bit maybe too aggressively or, or more aggressively than I would have played, uh, but I knew time was, was ticking, so I was trying to just get to a point where I could get to, to 20 lore um, and uh, ultimately couldn't get there. Um, we tied... So this was the, the deck list that I played, the Blue Steel deck list. Um, I ran four Argus, uh, four Smee, uh, to really kind of tech for that RP matchup. Um, two copies of Rise to help deal with the locations as well. Uh, in terms of what I drew into, I drew uh, Red Blue in the first matchup, who was playing Manners. And just didn't have enough to deal with the Manners. Um, I had to ink a Rise early. Um, and I was expecting, he had played a manor in one of the early games and, and in game three, um, I had to ink when I didn't want to, but I just kind of had a bricked hand and needed some ink to be able to keep ramping. And, um, it was kind of a, a, a tough spot. Uh, I probably should have held on to the rise, but, um, I didn't want to fall too far behind on, on ramp and board state. So, um, 
ended up dropping that one uh, in a best of three to one. Uh, then had that uh, that matchup against the RP where we went to time. Um, the opponent just was playing very slowly uh, as well. Um, drew a mirror in round three, uh, dropped that 2-0, and played uh, red-blue in the final match. I took that, or in the fourth round, I took that 2-0, and then drew my wife, who was 2-2, uh, who got paired down into me, um, and I just conceded to her so that she had a chance at 3-2. At um, she ended up not making top cut. Um, her tiebreakers got a little bit tanked because um, someone she played against uh, or two people she played against dropped out. So um, kind of tanked her tiebreakers a bit. On Sunday, uh, I played at DVY games. Um, again, I was just like really frustrated with how my deck performed with um, Blue Steel and just with how I piloted it. I know it's a tough deck to pilot. So uh, I was talking to my friend and my friend was like, well, you should just play RP. Um, and so uh, I did, but I played a, a kind of spicy RP that he had been working on that he handed me the list for, which again is not the smartest thing. Like I feel like I just sabotaged myself again. I, I should have played uh, a deck that I was more familiar with. Um, this is what I ended up playing, uh, a kind of location-based uh, RP. So um, eight locations, uh, the four gyms, uh, Magic Carpet, and Tuck Tuck to try to get you over um, a little bit early. Um, I really liked Floatsum. I think Floatsum played really well um, in in the majority of, of matches. But this deck just wasn't ready for prime time, ultimately. Um, it was a small set champ. Uh, I ended up in ninth place. Um, if I had, uh, so I was one and two. Um, if I had won that, I would have been two and two. Um, and I beat this person who ultimately ended up uh, two, two into um, top cut and then lost his, uh, first round match, I think. Um, so if I had won that, I my tiebreakers might have given me a chance um, since I had the 68 here. Um, I, I don't know, uh, you know, what his would have been. Um, I think I might have still gotten pushed out by this guy. So um, it's hard to say. So why did I lose? Looking back kind of on the month, um, some of it was variance. You know, I, I had a couple of really bad brick tans um, in the Steel Sapphire Mirror uh, at Forgotten Path. Um, you know, uh, just a couple of situations where uh, I played inconsistently or kind of simple mistakes for getting to quest um, something before I bounced it or, or just something simple like that. Also, just playing inconsistently, you know, I, I ended up in a situation on, like on Sunday where I was super tilted going into that last game and I just didn't play well. And I don't think I would have won either anyway. I was playing against like a kind of hyper, a hyper aggro uh, Ember Amethyst, but certainly didn't help me. Um, and there were a number of times like that where I just kind of got in my head. I was pretty tilted. Um, because I know I'm better than that. I know I can play better than that. Um, and ultimately self-sabotage, you know, playing decks that I wasn't familiar with that I hadn't really put reps into. Um, yeah. So what now? We go again. Um, I have one more set championship this weekend uh, on Saturday. Um, I'm uh, reaching out to try to get some coaching. Um, so I reached out to a couple people, um, about that who are kind of, you know, pro players who are very, very good. Um, and then, uh, I'm registered for Vegas DLC and we go again in brilliant skies. Um, you know, I, I'm not quitting the game. <laughs> I, I really enjoy the game. I, I wish I was better at it. 
Um, so we just keep practicing. Um, we keep getting better and we stay at it. Uh, I play league three to four times a week. Um, and so, you know, we just keep grinding, we keep practicing, we keep getting better. I don't have 15 years of experience playing card games. I didn't grow up playing Pokemon or Magic, so it's going to take me time to get there. Um, I know I can get there. Um, I tweeted, you know, yesterday that I, I need to have a little bit more compassion for myself. Um, I play in a really loaded local scene. Um, you know, uh, the players that I play with in, in some of my locals, um, you know, if I go back, so he's very, very good. He's a member of my testing group. Um, you know, I drew him in uh, round three. Uh, the Forgotten Path um, tournament had a couple of guys from uh, Reading that were very, very good who ended up like topping it. Um, uh, when I played at uh, here, there was a very good, um, couple of players, you know, up at the top with Connor and, and this Kylo dub guy. There was also a, another guy that played, I, I think he finished in fourth. Um, that guy, GK, uh, he actually has play tested for Ravensburger and been, you know, kind of a, a play tester for, for them. So he's very knowledgeable about the game. Um, you know, when I played uh, here, th this doesn't show the the first page, but a lot of these players are very good. Um, this guy, uh, the guy whose name is Steph Curry, he he won a stitch last uh, last set. Uh, just didn't have a good day, um, you know. And and this set, uh, Louis is very very good. Yerkes is very very good. Uh, typical is very, very good. Um, both Yerks and typical played in Dallas. Um, this last weekend, Dagot was like 70th place in Atlanta. Um, uh, you can't see it here, but Pooting is, uh, Dagot's partner. Um, and she made top 64 in, uh, in Dallas. So, uh, you know, I, I play against a very, very stacked field. Um, and I need to remind myself of that and, um, you know, just keep at it. So I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to keep, um, keep playing Lorcana, um, keep playing this game. I think it's a great game. I think it's a lot, a lot of fun. Um, so hopefully I'll see you out there at set champs this weekend, um, or pre-release for brilliant skies is coming up. Um, and then of course, uh, I have tickets for Vegas. So, I'm sure I'll see some folks uh, in Vegas. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.